Can I firstly acknowledge the traditional owners of the land where we have gathered and recognise and pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. I'd also like to congratulate the, inco the incoming President Wayne Swan and indeed thank him for it was he who reminded me just recently that when the great civil rights leader Martin Luther King told Americans and the world 55 years ago this year that I, I have a dream, it was a speech entitled Jobs and Freedom. Jobs and Freedom. He was fighting for civil rights and economic justice. He understood that there was no justice for African Americans in America in the 1960s without jobs. And like that great orator, Labor knows that our country cannot be fair without economic justice. And that means jobs, secure jobs, better paid jobs. Delegates for decades, economists have told us that inequality was the price of economic progress. But that simply is not true. Inequality is not the price of economic progress, it is an impediment. Today, those great international left-wing think tanks, the IMF, the World Bank, they've concluded at last that inequality damages economic growth. It stunts economic growth. And indeed, of course, delegates, the Labor Party has always known that. And that is why Labor is calling out inequality where we see it in the community and the economy, in education and in health, for women and our first Australians, in housing, across our tax system and in our labour market. Delegates, we cannot tackle inequality or build a future of inclusive prosperity unless we have workplace laws that deliver for working people. Australian workers' delegates are being left behind and going backwards because of wage stagnation and growing job insecurity. And one of the key causes is that enterprise bargaining is faltering in some parts of the labour market and in other parts failing altogether. Workers need, workers deserve a seat at the bargaining table, but too many are not afforded that right. Too many workers, often low paid with, in, with insufficient industrial strength, are missing out. That is why, if elected, a shortened Labor government will improve multi-employer bargaining, particularly for those workers, so it is an effective pathway for fair outcomes. <laughs> Labor's workplace laws will ensure every worker has an appropriate vehicle to bargain with their employer to get their fair share of economic growth. Where enterprise bargaining has failed or is failing, multi-employer bargaining should be another available option. And between now and election day, Labor will stand up for workers denied a decent pay increase and indeed decent job secu security that they need for themselves and their families. Labor rejects out of hand the, the race to the bottom on wages and the ability for employers to game the IR system, which is unfair to workers and indeed unfair for those employers who want to do the right thing. Labor wants to level the playing field and restore the balance in the labour market. That can only be achieved by employers, unions and workers bargaining under laws that deliver fair outcomes for all. Only Labor can be trusted to deliver a labour market that provides secure jobs and decent pay now and for the future. As we know, inequality is at a 75-year high. Corporate profits have grown six times faster than wages. When CEOs pay rises four times faster than the average wage growth to be 75 times the average wage, we know, delegates, something is wrong. No wonder that. For too many people, it seems that the link between hard work and fair reward is broken. Our challenge ahead is to deal with stagnant wages growth, insecure work, underemployment, corporate avoidance of workplace laws and the need for the IR system to keep pace with the gig economy. And delegates, we are ready to take that challenge head on. 
The Morrison government, on the other hand, won't even acknowledge the problem exists. Labor was the first opposition ever to make a submission to the national wage case to increase the minimum wage as we are committed to ensuring a minimum wage is a living wage. Today we've announced, of course, that a shortened Labor government will strengthen the ability of the Fair Work Commission to order pay increases for workers in female-dominated industries such as early childhood, aged care and disability services. This is a reform long overdue. <laughs> Unfinished business. Delegates, the changes to Chapter 5 of this platform reflects Labor's commitments which are not only extensive, they're focused on restoring the balance between hard work and fair reward and ensuring we have a Labor market fit for today and tomorrow. A Labor government is therefore ensuring that we will be an example model employer for the public service and restore and rebuild the public service. Labor will stop the use of labour hire for employers to undermine the paying conditions of direct employees, but requiring that workers in the same site doing the same work get the same pay. We will crack down. Yeah, it's pretty good. We will crack down, delegates, on sham independent contracting. We will develop a fair definition of casual. Federal Labor wants to make sure people are not stuck in the purgatory of permanent casualisation with all the hours and commitment to a full-time job, but none of the conditions. We need to see this end. And scandal after scandal has made it clear that worker exploitation is widespread in the modern Morrison government. The Liberals and the Nationals are not interested in stamping it out. This exploitation must stop. Labor will extend, where appropriate, responsibility for compliance with workplace laws to corporations who are the economic decision makers. Significantly increase penalties for employers and related entities who systematically underpay and exploit workers. Labor will stop unilateral termination of agreements and employers using sham enterprise agreements. We will increase penalties for phoenixing and superannuation will be made a workplace right. A Labor government delegates will provide 10 days paid family and domestic violence leave. <laughs> we have affirmed and strengthened our commitment to safety at work. Every single person in this country has the right to be free from industrial diseases and to come home safe at the end of the day. Delegates, Australians are dealing, as indeed many workers around the world, are dealing with technological disruption at a pace we could never have imagined. Labor is committed to ensuring we have the laws that provide appropriate coverage and protection for all forms of work. Labor knows our economy is stronger when our society is more equal, when our workers are skilled, confident and capable, when governments, business, unions and workers are engaged in a dialogue that is cooperative, that that indeed deals with the national challenges together and when there is a broad base of participation, contribution and reward. When we stand up for working people, delegates, when we stand up for them and their communities and when we listen to business concerns, we stand up for a fairer, more equitable, more inclusive Australia and a more prosperous one. That's the future Labor wants to help realise I commend the revised Chapter 5 for your consideration. Thank you very much. Thanks, Brendan.